Hey guys, Haz here at Shield K9, and um, I'm with my buddy Sir here, and we're going to shoot a little video on personal protection dogs, what you should look for, what you should avoid, and the real reason that um, I wanted to shoot this video is, to be quite frank, I've been seeing some dogs lately, dogs that have actually come to my kennel for remedial training, for behavioral modification, um, you know, I've, I've seen a number of, of these dogs lately from the same company um, that train personal protection or, and sell personal protection dogs and these dogs all have the same thing in common they are all extremely dangerous to everybody and everything and they all have next to no uh, obedience or control put on them needless to say that's a recipe for disaster as you can imagine um, and uh, you know it, people really need to be careful about what they what they buy you know or what they what they have done to their dog right in the name of of personal safety in the name of personal protection um, so firstly, what you got to understand about personal protection dogs, a lot of people think that they are weapons. Okay. They, they, you're, you're training this dog to be a savage, uh, you know, that, that this dog is, once he has this type of training, you know, he's, he's going to be not a, a, not a good family dog and, uh, you know, not the type of dog that you can take out in public. Nothing could be further from the truth, guys. Um, you know, for instance, Sir behind me is the strongest protection dog that we have in the kennel at this time, um, as in the so strongest dog that we have for sale, um, that is personal protection trained. Um, and this dog, uh, just spent the weekend at one of my trainer's houses. He's never been to her house before. Uh, she's a very small female, maybe 110, 120 pounds. Um, and Sir is at least her weight, if not maybe a little bit more. And um, she went, he went to her house, he spent Thanksgiving with her and her family, multiple small children, multiple people and adults he's, he's never met before, and, and he had a great time and he was an excellent, excellent, well-behaved dog. Um, and, and, and that pretty much is typical for, for a personal protection dog that, we, that we've trained or that we put out. Now, what you guys need to understand is, is the most important selection feature in a personal protection dog is obviously the temperament of the dog, the genetic quality of the dog, the health of the dog, of course, but that's not really what we're talking about today. Um, the genetic temperament, what is the dog naturally? Is the dog default, confident, social, happy, outgoing? That's the type of dog that we look for here. I, I won't even take, I won't even purchase or, 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 or bother training puppies that uh, or, or, or adult dogs that show anything like handler aggression, resource guarding, or any other major temperament flaw that you know would create a safety hazard for people. Um, the the other thing, obviously, is the training, and the training is is just as important as the genetic temperament in terms of our selection um, and our process for creating a, a good personal protection dog. Um, we train these dogs to number one be very controlled. All right, these dogs are not out of control. Our primary goal in our training is actually obedience and control. All right, then protection. And the protection tripe the protection training that we do is not offensive, it's defensive training, okay? We don't want these dogs to be offensive weapons. We want these dogs to be able to protect their handlers and to protect their property. Um, nothing more and nothing less. We do realistic type of training with the dog, um, you know, as in we show the dog realistic threat scenarios and we train the dog to respond to active threats. Um, you know, and, and, and to various uh, situations, but we don't really do a lot, if any, um, offensive training. We're, we're not teaching the dog to, to, to find people and go after them. It's, it's just not what most people need for a personal protection dog, and it's not responsible to do an excessive amount of that type of training with the dogs. This company that I'm talking about that puts out these dangerous dogs, you know, and, and I know some of you with more balls and sense are probably thinking hey that's a great thing you know uh you know i want a dog that's that, that that'll kill anybody anytime any place um and and you know you like i said more balls than sense you're not really thinking through that you're not thinking about your kids you're not thinking about you know granny you're not thinking about the poor guy just jogging down the street you're not thinking about all the implications. You're not thinking about your wife when she goes to hug you and gets attacked by the dog and, and ends up having to go to the hospital. You know, you're not thinking about these things. You know, you just think, oh, yeah, I, I, I can't wait to have a badass dog that bites people. That's not what a good personal protection dog trainer puts out. All right. So, um, you know, these dogs that I'm talking about, these these dogs that, that have been ruined, essentially, by this company, they had way too much protection put on them. They had no control 
and lots of protection. Way too many scenarios, um, you know, way too many threat pictures were shown to these dogs. They think that anybody at any time in any place is potential for them to bite. All right. Now, needless to say, you, you should be able to figure out why that's a bad thing. And these dogs act like it. These dogs will hurt a child. These dogs, like I said, will hurt an old lady or, or the mailman or anybody. So be careful, guys. Be careful. Uh, you know, the type of training that is put on your dog or, or is put on uh, the dog that you're buying is very important. You know, this, this dog here, sir, you know, we've done various threat scenarios. You may see some of his videos, but it's generally not offensive in nature. It's very defensive. He does a lot of defense of the handler scenarios. So if someone attacks me or whoever's handling him, he's protective of that. You know, he'll be protective and, and take the, the appropriate action. If somebody tries to home invade or, or come on the property that he doesn't know, he'll do what he's got to do. But these are not, we're not creating offensive weapons here, guys. I mean, we're not training patrol dogs uh, for the police here. I mean, if, if that's, we do do that, but that's not what a personal protection dog is. And, and, People do not realize that a lot of the time, and they don't understand the difference. Our dogs are safe dogs. They're good dogs with the family. And that's really what you should look for in a personal protection dog, first and foremost. Then, you know, the protection training and the ability.